Hi everybody, it's Andrea Mercy, aka Anlom, and welcome to my studio. Phew! That is my huge sigh of relief. I finally finished my Think Pink art for the Creative Arts collaboration and posted it yesterday and put it on the playlist and put it on their Facebook page and Twittered it and Facebooked it to death. It was a long haul. I don't know if you've gone to see them, but uh, my first video was a fail. I ended up scrapping the, the project completely because it was frustrating me beyond belief. And then when I did the second one, I was running out of time, so I did the second one right away. So I was a, a little bit stressed, a little bit anxious. You can go view the good one here. I did post my fail one just because I think that um, I learned some stuff from it and I think other people could learn some stuff from it. And while I was doing that video, I did two different kind of techniques. Uh, one had to do with molding paste, which I'm going to do a separate video for. And then this one, I was using a sea sponge and I was trying to cover up a whole bunch of mistakes and I just really liked the modeled effect so I said I will come back and do a technique video on how to do a sponge, sea sponge, acrylic, modeled, background, effect, technique. That was a really long title for something that's very easy. Let's get started. I used watercolor paper in my video for my finished piece however today because we're just doing a technique uh, video I'm just going to use this Canton mixed media paper it's 9 by 12 inches I have already ripped out a piece of paper and um, this is going to buckle because we're going to be uh, putting quite a bit of paint on here uh, we will be drying it between layers but this paper is okay for a little bit of collaging a little bit of gluing a little bit of whatever but it's it's going to buckle um, however, it is a technique video, so I'm not too worried about it. I also changed the size of my camera setting. I had it out a little bit more because I thought people would want to see more of my desk. Um, but I feel now that being a little bit closer to my desk and the substrate will give people a better idea of what I'm doing. So if you have comments about that, please put them in the comments below and uh, we can review it. This camera, I've, I actually lowered it by 12 inches and I'm thinking if I can get some kind of a setup, I'm going to lower it probably another, maybe another 8 to 10 inches. It was quite high up um, only because I had nothing else to attach it to. Anyways, that's a lot of blah blah for nothing. <laughs> so I'm going to take blues. I won't be doing anything in pink again for a really long time. Never really was, was a pink lover, but after the last two or three days, I'm done with pink for a while. Oh, so this is uh, just a turquoise. This is Amsterdam Sky Blue Light. I think everything I do for the next little while is going to be in blues and greens. Turquoise green from Amsterdam. Ooh. Ooh, that's really quite rude. However, I know I have another one of these somewhere. And a uh, cobalt blue hue. And I'm going to put a little bit of white, just basics. I shouldn't say just basics. Basics is a very good paint. It's very good for doing all sorts of stuff. And uh, it's got nice coverage and it's affordable. So I'm using Liquitex Basics White. There we go. Because this is a technique video, I'm not going to gesso my paper, my substrate. Um, and, it's, and because of that, it's going to buckle as well. So here we go. I have a damp, no water coming out of it, just moistened. Um, by the way, just so you know, I knew this already, but I let the paint dry in it the other day after I got a little bit frustrated. And actually, I'm just going to cut that out. And it matted. Um, you need to rinse out all your sponges right away, or else they get hard, and then you don't get the effect that you want. 
There we go. Nice and soft. Let's start with some light blue. So basically what I was trying to do with this on my first fail video was I had made a lot of mistakes. That's not true. It's not that I made a lot of mistakes. It's that I had um, overworked my background and I had gone from white to pink to white to pink and it just turned into mush and then I was like I've got to fix this because I didn't I didn't want to start over I'd already invested three or four hours into it believe it or not it took me that long just to get an hour worth of video and so I covered it up and it looked really good but it just it kind of slid downhill from there so I started over again but I really liked the effect that I got and I got this really kind of cool modeled effect I'm gonna see if I can recreate it here and then you can do that especially for people that I don't struggle with backgrounds and I don't struggle with final layers it's the middle layers of painting mixed media even when I knit and crochet beginning no problem end, no problem because you're excited about a new project, you're excited about finishing your product, project, but the middle part can be, can uh, be the hardest, the most challenging part of a project, I find. Um, it's not a new project anymore, and you're not close to finished, and you know you're not close to finish. <laughs> Sometimes I can be weighed down by that. Now don't worry that we're going over the light blue too much because we're going to come back and do more blue because generally what I want to do is get rid of the white which is kind of funny because then I'm going to put white into it but I would just want to cover up the paper. So just so you get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm actually going to I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and then I'm going to fast forward. How's that? Because you've already seen the colors and you've already seen the technique. So let's uh, let's fast forward through this and see how far I get. So one, I stop talking and two, this video isn't an hour and a half long like it normally is. I'm going to heat gun this right now and dry it so that when I put on the white and then the, the redo the layers of color, they don't mush into each other because right now they still have some really good definition. But if I keep putting on more and more layers, like I did in my first art video, then it just smushes all together and you lose the definition. So heat gun, heat gun, fast forward. Okay, so there's the first layer and it is mostly dry. The paper is buckled a little bit, but not as bad as I was expecting. Um, so this sponged background, um, I'm gonna put a couple more layers on. You can get a marbled effect if you had left, if I had left it dry and, and kind of twisted the sponge at the same time, the colors would have mixed and I would have gotten a marbled effect. So maybe I'll do a video like that one time to show you how that works out. Um, Cause it's kind of cool too. All right, I'm gonna start with my light color again.
Okay, that is really good. I am going to put a little bit more light blue on it and a little bit of white and I should be I should be done, which means I would have oh my 15 minute video. <laughs> I don't think I have any 15 minute videos. Just want to bring a little bit of the light blue back to the top. Just a little bit. Just to highlight a little bit. And that pushed some, again, you have to be careful, right? You don't want to be going back and forth and back and forth. I just noticed that it pushed back a lot of this cobalt blue. So I'm just going to bring that back just a little bit. There comes a point where you have to say, step away, step away, step away. All right, just a little bit of white just to give it some zing. Now, I mean a little bit of white. It just see how that just gives a little bit of just a little and reload often so that the, um, the underlying paint that isn't dry doesn't stick and then you end up again mushing your colors together. Just a little random, random sparkle. So there you are, a lovely background, uh, very easily done with a sea sponge and some acrylic paints. I mean, I use one, two, three, four colors and a little bit of white. You don't have to use four colors, you can use three, you can use two. Actually, you can use white and black and just do a monochromatic scheme. Um, you can use complementary colors like blue and orange, red and green, purple and yellow. You can use analogous colors, so the colors that sit beside each other on the color wheel so you can go through greens and blues you can go through blues and violets you can go through the reds and oranges or anywhere in between Th this color wheel is fantastic even though I took a lot of this in school I sometimes I forget so this color wheel helps me out a lot with tones and colors um, try it out I think that it would be great for someone who has problems sometimes with a background or that blank page really scares them a little bit and then they don't know what to do so you can do a bunch at a time put out a whole bunch of different colors take your sponge it doesn't have to be a sea sponge it can be a makeup sponge it can be uh, a kitchen sponge just make sure it's a new one because you don't want the chemicals from your cleaning supplies to get in because it could break down the colors or change the colors um, and just set out a bunch of canvases or set out a bunch of papers or set out a bunch of cardstock and just make a whole bunch of backgrounds so that you can start doing your art piece right away when you're ready to go. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe woo, right there. Uh, like and share with your friends and if you have any comments, please put them down below. I do try to answer comments back within a day or so. And I would love to hear from you. Have a great day. Bye.